In this video, I would like to show you an awesome module that allows us to create our own custom RBX script signals, which can be useful for imitating events for custom objects made by our own custom classes. We know that instances in our game, which are all of the objects in our game created through the instance.new function, for example, like a part, we know that all of these instances have different properties, but they also have events. So for example, we know there's different events like the destroying event, or for example, the ancestry changed event, and all of these are RBX script signals. And we can easily connect to these signals and listen for some information that's passed through those events. But basically the main purpose of these is to allow us to make our code event driven. Now we also know that using idiomatic object oriented programming, we can also create basically our own custom instances or objects from classes. So wouldn't it be neat if we could merge these two ideas of custom objects and RBX script signals and have our own custom objects with their own custom events that can be fired and listened to. This is where the good signal module comes into play. It's made by a developer called Stravant, and this module allows you to create custom signals that act just like regular RBX script signals. I currently have my module stored in replicated storage, so I just required it. And to create a new signal object, we can just use the dot new constructor within the signal module, or basically the class. So I'll just create a new, I'll call this my signal, and we'll do signal dot new. And now this is my custom signal that I can listen to. As you can see, it has the same functions as a regular RBX script signal. We can connect a function to it. We can wait for the event to fire. We can connect a function once to it. We can also fire it to basically trigger all of the event handlers. And then there's also this other function here that allows us to basically disconnect all functions that are currently connected to the signal, which can be useful if you need to clean stuff up. So just as an example, I'm going to connect to the signal just like I would with any other signal in the game. I'll just put in my Lambda function here and I'll just put out a print statement saying that my signal was fired or triggered or something like that. And now that I've connected this function to it, I'm going to refer again to my signal and I'm just going to fire it, which should trigger my function listening to the signal. So if we go ahead and execute the script, what you're going to see is that the signal was fired, which is what we would expect. Now we can also pass extra information to this fire function. As you can see, it takes a variadic type or an unknown number of arguments. So we could pass different things like one, two, three, four, however many arguments we want. And then we could get those arguments here as well. And then I'll just store them all in a table. I'll just call this args and I'll put all of those different uh, arguments slap it in the table, and then I guess the easiest way to do it would just be to print the table out into the console. And now if I execute my code again, as you can see, my signal was fired, and I got my table with each of my arguments, one, two, three, and four. Pretty cool. We also have access to the once function, which means this function will only execute once and then automatically disconnect. So if I were to fire this signal twice, this function should only execute once because it will be immediately disconnected after it executes for the first time. So let me clear up my console and run the code again. What you're going to see is that my signal was fired, but only once, even though I'm firing the signal twice, which is again, the expected behavior that we would want with a custom object that's trying to imitate RBX script signals. Now, another neat thing is that these functions also, just like a regular RBX script signal, returns another object that basically imitates the RBX script connection object. So I could say connection is equal to my signal once. And as you can see with this connection, I have the ability to disconnect it like I would when I'm connecting to a regular RBX script signal. So for example, if I had a part, let me just make a new part here real quick. And I were to listen, to its, let's say I listen to the touched event of this part, I connected to a function to it. What I'm going to get from this connect function is an RBX script connection. So I'll just call this uh, other connection. And if I take a look at the type of other connection, as you can see, it's an RBX script connection and it has one function, which is the ability to disconnect or stop this function from listening to the touched event. 
and the good single class does the exact same thing. It gives us a connection that we are able to disconnect, which is awesome. Now let's actually go ahead and take a look at an example of using signals for custom objects made by your own classes. For example, I have this module here. This is my example class. And right now I have two signals in here, one I called the destroying signal and another one called the level change signal. And this can come in really handy when you want to, let's say, imitate the destroying event that instances have in the Roblox game engine, but do it for your own custom objects because it's kind of difficult to listen for when a table is destroyed, when it's literally, you know, just a table, it's not an instance with an event, but we can create our own custom signal to imitate the destroying event. And I have a function down here to destroy objects created by this class and right before I destroy the object or basically clear the table and get rid of all the values, I fire that destroying signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my example class. If you're interested on how I did that, it is a plugin called require autocomplete. I'll also link that in the description, but let me go ahead and just create an example object from my example class using the dot new constructor. And here you can see with my example object, I have my destroying signal and my level change signal. So let's go ahead and listen to my destroying signal. I'll connect a function to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out my example object, which should still have all of its values inside of it. Then I'm going to yield and then I'm going to print it again. So because I'm yielding here, I'm giving up the current thread of execution and that means it's able to go back clean up the table or delete all the values inside of it. And then it'll come back and print it again. And this should just be an empty table right here. So let me now destroy my example object by calling the destroy function on it, which should trigger this event. And we should print our table normally here will yield. And then we should print an empty table. So let me execute this code. And as you can see, we got our table printed here. It still has our destroying signal, our level change signal, and our other field of level with a value of zero. But then after we yielded, as you can see, it had the opportunity to clean up the table and delete all the values inside of it. And now it's just an empty table. But this is one example of using custom signals to imitate, let's say the destroying event for your own custom objects, which is really cool. Another signal I have in here is that level change signal. And these kind of signals can be very useful when you want to basically notify other scripts in your game when a particular value has changed in your custom objects. In this case, that is this uh, level field right here that has a value of zero. When we call the level up function, we're going to increment that level. And then after we increment it, we're going to fire that the level has changed for this object. We're going to fire that event and give uh, what the previous level was to any functions that is listening to this signal. And let's listen to the level change signal this time. We'll connect a function to this and we'll be given the old level that our object was. And then let's just print out what the old level was. So old level was, and then I'll just put old level. And then we can go ahead and print out what the new level is. And then we'll just refer to example object dot level. And now what I can do is I can call the level up function. And now if we execute our code, you're going to see the old level was zero. And now the new level is one. So good signal is an awesome function that we can use to imitate RBX script signals in our game when we're creating custom objects from custom classes. And I might as well just read the description inside of the script itself. It says, this is a signal class which has effectively identical behavior to a normal RBX script signal with the only difference being a couple extra stack frames at the bottom of the stack trace when an error is thrown. This implementation caches runner coroutines so the ability to yield in the signal handlers comes at minimal extra costs over a naive, I think he meant to say native, over a native signal implementation that either always or never spawns a thread. And then he gives you some examples of the API and then who the author is. And that's kind of it. So this is an awesome module. If you want to use it in your projects, link to this module or this code will be in the description below. It's very useful. Use it. I personally use it all of the time. And I also want to mention that I now have a public discord server. So if you would like to join that link will also be in the description. Otherwise, that's going to be all from me in this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.